Hey, what's up guys? Vortex here. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Thinkware U1000, which may very well be the very best dash cam currently available on the market. Now, the U1000, it's a high-end premium dash cam. It records at 4K up front to give you really nice video quality, as well as 2K in the rear, which gives you even higher resolution for the rear camera compared to other models. It's capable of recording both when you're driving as well as when you're parked, plus it's got some really nice and sophisticated parking mode capabilities that you don't see in a lot of other dash cams. Additionally, the U1000 is a cloud-connected dash cam, so you can connect to it remotely and it's able to connect out to the cloud to add some extra features. It retails for $399 for the front-only version or $499 for the two-channel version that records both front and rear. Now, the U1000, it's not a brand new dash cam. It was originally launched back in 2019, and since then there's been a number of improvements for it and the dash cam has gotten better since. And so in this video, I wanna go ahead and take a closer look here at the U1000 and how it stands now here in 2021. Now, full disclosure, this is not a paid or sponsored review. I've never done those, and I never will. Uh, the U1000 that I'm taking a look at here is a review sample that I've been sent for free from Thinkware. Additionally, if you find this video helpful and you'd like to purchase a U1000, you can use the uh, links down in the video description to purchase. I'm going to have a number of them uh, for different dash cam variants, uh, memory cards, cables, different accessories that you may find helpful too that I'll also mention here in this video. Uh, they are affiliate links, so if you use those links, it does support my channel without costing you anything. And so if you find videos like this helpful, you can use them, and it allows me to continue doing videos like this here for you. And so with that said, let's go ahead and start diving into the dash cam. So first off, taking a closer look here at the U1000, you'll notice it's kind of a rectangular wedge-shaped design. You've got a number of buttons here on the back to do things like uh, turn the dash cam on and off, uh, turn on and off Wi-Fi, maybe disable your microphone, things like that. Plus, right in the center, there's a big uh, emergency record button, which is great. That way, in case maybe something important happens on the road, you can just press this big button right here. And I like the fact that it's kind of uh, easy to press and it's separate from all the other buttons so you don't maybe accidentally turn off the dash cam or something like you do with some other models. So I like it being separate right there. At the very top, you've got a number of different status LEDs to let you know when the dash cam is recording, when you've got a GPS lock or you're connected to the cloud. On the left side of the dash cam, you've got all the cable inputs for things like your power input, uh, where you plug in the optional rear camera or where you could plug in the optional radar module. The radar module, it's a pretty cool accessory that's available here just for the U1000 that adds some pretty cool functionality that you're not gonna see in any other dash cam. So I definitely wanna dive into this more in this video too. And then on the right side of the dash cam, you've got the memory card slot. Now, because the U1000 is designed with the cables over here on this side and the memory card on that side, uh, I would generally recommend mounting this uh, centered on your windshield behind your rear view mirror or optionally on the passenger side of the vehicle. This way you still have easy access to the memory card slot. Now on the driver's side of the vehicle, that's normally where I'm running my radar detectors anyway. And so if you're running both of them, yeah, that's gonna work out just fine. Now the U1000 mounts with a double stick tape and it's got a nice quick release mount to make it really easy to pop the dash cam on and off the windshield. I like these types of mounts because they're nice and solid and stable, though they don't allow you to actually rotate the dash cam if you want to point it sideways. Uh, now, the lens itself is adjustable to kind of angle up and down to make sure that you've got the uh, lens aligned properly. Uh, plus, the app, which we'll talk about here in this video, uh, also makes it a lot easier to go in and ensure that everything is mounted nice and straight. Now, diving into video quality next, this is something that the U1000 is going to do a really good job at. Uh, now, the front camera is capable of recording at 4K and 30 FPS. In fact, the video quality that you'll get here from the U1000 is going to be some of the best that you'll find out of any dash cam. Blackview had some of the first 4K dash cams with their DR900S and DR900X, which both have the same video quality. Uh, the U1000 came out later. It's got newer technology, and so I've actually found the video quality is better with the Thinkware than it is with the Blackview. In fact, I've actually found the U1000's video quality, at least for the front camera, to be comparable to something like the VFO A129 Pro, which I like is more of a budget option. Uh, the U1000, similar video quality for the front, but it's got a lot more features, better parking mode, uh, cloud functionality, etc. Now, the rear camera, this is also going to be a difference too. Uh, the optional rear camera with the U1000 uh, records at 2K or 1440p as opposed to other dash cams which typically record at just 1080p in the rear. And so for that reason, the rear dash cam of the U1000 I find is generally going to do a better job than most any other dash cam that's available. In fact, I've done a whole video just comparing the video quality with a number of the different top tier dash cams. You can take a look at that video if you like. Uh, click the button on screen or down in the video description for more details. Either way, though, when it comes to capturing important details such as faces or license plates, the U1000 is going to do a great job here. Now, if you'd like to record at 60 FPS instead of 30 to double the frame rate, get smoother video, twice as many frames captured, uh, the U1000 is capable of recording at 2K with the front camera and 60 FPS. Uh, the rear camera, though, will still be at 2K30. Uh, the front camera is capable of doing 2K60. 
Now, I personally prefer shooting in 4K because I like the added resolution, but I know some people like having the 60fps uh, option. Now, in terms of field of view, I find that the U1000 tends to kind of have a wider field of view than some other dash cams. Uh, the front camera is going to record at a 150 degree viewing angle. Uh, the rear dash cam is slightly wider at 156 degrees. I know some people have complained about this and have said that the uh, videos coming out of it look a little bit distorted and fisheye, but this is kind of the balance that Thinkware is going for to help ensure that you're able to record most everything up front as well as back behind, again, if you get the optional rear camera. Now, in terms of low light sensitivity, I find that the U1000 does do a pretty good job. Now, compared to the black view that I normally run, for example, I find that Thinkware tends to expose a little bit brighter and does a better job of capturing and recording everything going on around you at night. Obviously, nighttime is going to be a struggle for any dash cam. There's always going to be some situations where maybe a dynamic range is limited or things start to get blurry due to longer shutter speeds. But overall, I find the U1000 does do a pretty good job. It's important to note that if you get the uh, polarizer with the U1000, it sticks directly to the lens. It's not removable the way it is with some other dash cams. So uh, if you stick it on, that is going to affect low light sensitivity somewhat. Um, and it's not removable in case you ever want to do that. But I know most people just stick it on for the improved uh, video quality overall, especially in the daytime. Uh, and then you have a little bit of a reduced sensitivity at night. Now, Thinkware also offers a feature called Super Night Vision, which is going to help to uh, boost the exposure and sensitivity at night. I like the fact that Thinkware uh, gives you the option of using this full time, continuously, or maybe only when parking, which is my preference. I normally have this feature turned off while driving, and I tend to like it more just while parked. And the idea behind Super Night Vision 2.0 is it's basically going to be boosting the exposure of the dash cam uh, to help you better see into the shadows, into the dark areas, and capture any details that may otherwise be missed. Next, in terms of reliability, this is also something that I've noticed is pretty good here with Thinkware. Uh, the reliability and the improved video quality are probably the two main advantages that I've found uh, compared to some of the competition. You know, dash cams from like Blackview and VFO, for example, and many others too. Uh, again, video quality is good and the reliability here seems to be really nice. In my experience and seeing what other people have been posting online on different forums, it seems like people are just reporting a lot fewer issues in terms of reliability, overheating, things like that with the uh, Thinkware dash cams compared to some of the other options. And honestly, that's really important. A dash cam has to have good video quality and it's got to be reliable. So in case anything happens on the road, you can trust that your dash cam is actually going to be up and running and able to record it. And so for that reason, I really like the U1000. Again, it's checking two of the most important boxes, which are video quality and reliability. Next, moving on to parking recording. This is also something that's uh, pretty special here with the Thinkware dash cams. Now with the U1000, you've got three different parking mode options. First, you've got motion detection, which also gives you your uh, impact detection, buffered impact detection specifically. Uh, second, you've got time-lapse recording. And third, you've got a special energy saving option. Now, something that Thinkware is known for with their different dash cams is uh, uh, low energy consumption, which means that uh, if your dash cam is actually taking battery power while you're parked, uh, Thinkware dash cams overall just tend to record for a longer period of time than you'll find with some other dash cams that actually require more power. Then as a bonus, Thinkware also has their radar module, which helps add additional functionality, especially when you're running it in uh, the energy saving parking mode. Now, starting off, let's go ahead and talk about uh, motion detection parking recording. This is a really popular option. Now this is going to be really nice to allow you to record different cars driving by or people actually approaching your car. Additionally, it's going to be giving you your buffered impact detection. So in case of a hit and run or maybe somebody hits your car, the U1000 is able to record both before the impact as well as afterwards. This way you capture the entire event. Now this is really nice. I know a lot of dash cams also have some sort of impact detection or something, but typically those dash cams are kind of asleep most of the time. Uh, and only when maybe an impact happens, then the dash cam wakes up and begins recording. So you're going to be missing the actual event that triggered the dash cam. You're not going to be getting that recording. So I really like the fact that the U1000 has buffered offered motion detection and impact detection. Then when you get back in the car, the dash cam is going to tell you how many events were recorded, how many motion detection events, and how many impact detected events. Event detection recording. Two. Occurred. You're generally going to be getting a number of those just from cars driving by and whatnot, so maybe that would be a better option if you're in a parking garage where there's fewer cars going by. Um, and you also want to consider the fact that a lot of times when you get back in the car, if you close your trunk or close your car door, that's going to register as an impact. Uh, and so if you maybe hear one impact in your car when you start up your car, that's chances are that's you. But if you hear two or three impacts, you're like, okay, what was going on when I was parked? And maybe it would be a good idea to check your dash cam. Now, because of that, that can actually lead to a really chatty uh, startup when you start up your car. During parking mode. Motion detection recording. Over 10 and event detection recording. Two, occurred. Continuous recording will now start. 
GPS connected. Connected to the internet. So as you can hear, there's a lot of things that the dash cam is telling you when you start up your car. And unfortunately, there's no way to control what it tells you and what it doesn't. So every time you get in, you're going to hear things like GPS connected and motion detection and all that kind of stuff. I really, really wish, and I say this in every single video that involves the Thinkware dash cam, I wish that Thinkware would give us the ability to uh, more granularly control what it tells us at startup and maybe turn off things like GPS connected that we don't necessarily need to know every time we get in the car. So Thinkware, please add that functionality. For that reason, because it's not available, I honestly just wind up disabling the uh, audio altogether. And so I don't get any of those uh, impact notifications and stuff the way I do with some other dash cams that do give us the control. So that's something that I really wish the U1000 had. Now that said, remember how I mentioned Thinkware is known for their uh, high efficiency, especially in parking mode? Uh, I've tested this uh, motion detection, buffered impact detection with a variety of different popular dash cams. And I find uh, that the U1000, the two channel version, uh, records for over 33 hours, which is longer than the competition. Now for this test, I use the uh, Black Box My Car BI750 battery pack. I'll talk more about this battery and some of the other options here a little bit later in this video, but the exact parking record times are going to vary, of course, depending on what battery you use. If you've got expansion batteries, if you're running uh, just one dash cam instead of two, you're going to be getting longer record times. If you turn on the cloud functionality, you're going to be getting less record time. So of course things are going to vary, but just to give you kind of an apples to apples comparison with other dash cams. Now the next parking mode option that the U1000 offers is time-lapse recording. Uh, this is going to be basically recording continuously at 2 FPS. You're going to be getting video, but not audio here. And this is going to be a nice way just to record for a longer period of time and just kind of capture everything while your car is parked. I personally generally don't use time-lapse features, but I know that a lot of people do like it. And then finally, let's talk about the energy saving mode. This is something that's pretty special here, especially with the U1000. Uh, again, remember how I mentioned Thinkware is generally pretty good for longer parking mode record times? Uh, the energy saving mode is going to improve this considerably. Uh, again, the U1000, it's already going to do better than a lot of other dash cams. But if you switch it into energy saving mode, instead of recording for just over a day, it's going to allow the dash cam to record for over a week, <laughs> about eight to nine days or so in my testing. Now, the way that it does this is the dash cam is not going to be recording continuously, so you're not going to be getting your buffered impact detection. Instead, the dash cam is going to be in a very low-powered sleep state. It's not recording, uh, and just the G sensor is running. So there's no motion detection, but it's mainly for uh, non-buffered impact detection. In case somebody hits your car, uh, the dash cam will take a second to wake up, and then it begins recording. In fact, you'll see this here in this clip to where uh, somebody bumped into my mom's car, which is running a two-channel U1000. Somebody actually bumped into her from behind, and you can see the clip where they're actually pulling back away from her car after hitting her car. Uh, the dash cam missed the actual impact, but it is able to see the person actually moving away from her car. And so while the energy saving mode does lose the ability to actually record the entire event, including uh, the person kind of before they hit your car, it allows you to record for a much longer period of time to ensure that at least you do get something. Now, what if you're like, hey, I kind of want the best of both worlds. I'd like buffered parking recording, but I also want to use the energy saving mode to be able to record for a long period of time. That's going to be something unique and special here to the U1000, and that's where this uh, uh, radar module comes into play. Uh, in short, it's a K-band transmitter uh, that's going to be transmitting out the front of your car, and it's just going to be looking for uh, maybe different vehicles approaching your car. Uh, then, in case somebody's coming towards your vehicle, it's going to wake up the dash cam and start recording. Uh, then, if it detects an impact, maybe somebody hits your car, uh, it's going to go ahead and save that entire clip, both before they hit your car as well as afterwards. I can go ahead and simulate that so you can see. Uh, you'll notice there's a car approaching right here, so the radar module is going to wake up the dash cam. I'm just going to go ahead and whack the car like this to simulate an impact, and you'll see the U1000 is going to go ahead and record this whole event, uh, both before the impact as well as afterwards. I can go ahead and simulate that so you can see. Uh, you'll notice there's a car approaching right here, so the radar module is going to wake up the dash cam. I'm just going to go ahead and whack the car like this to simulate an impact, and you'll see the U1000 is going to go ahead and record this whole event, uh, both before the impact as well as afterwards. If they don't hit your car and it doesn't record any impact, the dash cam will just go back to sleep without saving anything to the memory card. So this is going to be a way to get both your buffered parking mode as well as your long-term energy saving mode. Now this is something that might be worth actually doing a whole dedicated video on, uh, but as far as the key main things that you need to know, I'd say there's five things to know about the radar module. Number one, uh, it only records up front. It's designed to be mounted on your windshield right next to the U1000. And again, it's just gonna be capturing any vehicles coming towards you from the front. You don't have any uh, radar monitoring in the rear. Second, it's designed just to work to monitor vehicles. It's not really gonna do a great job of actually uh, recording people approaching your car. I've found in some situations it might, but really it's gonna be best optimized for vehicles. 
Third, because this works in energy saving mode uh, that shuts down the Wi-Fi and whatnot, it means that when you're using the radar module in the energy saving mode, you're not gonna be getting any of the cloud functionality while you're parked. Fourth, because it's a K-band transmitter, it is gonna be uh, causing some false alerts to most radar detector users that drive by your car while parked. Uh, I find that it'll false the unit in R7, for example, but the Redline 360C doesn't seem to false to it. But most detectors are gonna false, so something to be aware of. And then finally, number five, it is an optional extra for the U1000. It retails for $90. And I found that it's actually a really popular option. A lot of people wind up getting it because of the advantages of both the long-term parking recording as well as the buffered impact detection up front. And so I think it's a pretty cool accessory. I just wish that they chose something other than K-band to transmit on so it doesn't cause false alerts for all of us radar detectors users. Now when it comes to configuring all the uh, parking mode stuff, including the voltage management, all of that is going to be built directly into the dash cam that you configure via the app. Now with other dash cams, sometimes you have to buy an external accessory or something, uh, but in this case everything is going to be built directly into the U1000. Again, you're going to need the hardwire cable to tap into your car battery or a dedicated dash cam battery pack. Uh, but again, if you work with the car battery option, let's start with that. So if you uh, go into the U1000, uh, you'll notice in the uh, parking mode options, after you go to uh, adjust maybe the sensitivity of your motion detection or impact detection, uh, you're gonna find things like adjusting uh, the timer for how long uh, the dash cam records for, or maybe indefinitely before it shuts off. Additionally, you've got a number of additional battery protection options to protect your car battery and ensure that uh, the dash cam records while you're parked and then it shuts off after a certain point and you're still able to start your car battery back up next time. Uh, so for example, you've got the voltage cutoff threshold. So you can decide uh, how far the dash cam actually drains your car battery before it shuts off. Uh, at higher thresholds, that's better in terms of battery health. Uh, at lower thresholds, you get longer parking mode recording times, right? Um, and you've got control here and customizability for both 12 volt systems as well as 24 volt systems. Uh, then underneath that, you're also gonna be seeing an option for your wintertime battery protection, which is pretty cool. I don't usually see that available, um, but this is basically gonna give you some additional protection to choose, uh, you know, what are the colder months of the year where you generally live and drive? It may vary depending on northern or southern hemispheres and whatnot. And so you've got some additional uh, coverage and protection here. Now, if you'd like to have a dedicated dash cam battery pack, it's typically what I recommend and it's what I do myself. Um, you can, of course, wire the U1000 directly into your car battery. It's what I did in my mom's car with her U1000 and it's been working great. Uh, I personally prefer going for the dedicated dash cam battery pack just because it puts uh, less wear and tear on the car battery. Uh, I know some people actually have issues tapping into their car battery and getting parasitic drain, especially on some higher end cars. We see it with Subarus. Some Teslas sometimes don't even have like the proper wiring that's necessary, so you gotta go for the battery pack and whatnot. So uh, anyways, if you wanna go for the battery pack, there's a couple options and ways to go about it. Uh, Thinkware actually has their own dedicated battery. It's called the iVolt BAB50. It's a smaller battery than the competition, but it's also gonna be less expensive. Uh, then there's, of course, the Cellink Neo, which is a really popular option. I've been using one of these for several years now, and it's been great. And then finally, there's the new Black Box My Car BI750. This is a larger battery pack, about 25% larger than the Cellink Neo, but it's also able to recharge up to 25% faster than the Neo, which is really nice, especially as you start getting into larger capacity batteries. Now, I'm personally considering switching over to the BI750 at some point because, yeah, I do find it gives you 25% longer record times than the other battery packs which is nice. And then in terms of how long it's able to power your U1000 off the battery pack, again, in my testing, I get uh, a little over 33 hours uh, running the two channel option, uh, and then closer to eight or nine days if I'm running it uh, in the energy saving mode. And again, this is gonna vary depending on settings and how many cameras you use, and if you use the cloud and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you'd like a battery pack with your dash cam, I'm gonna link to these different options down in the video description as well, uh, as well as the expansion battery packs if you wanna double or triple your parking mode record times. Now, coming back to the U1000, I wanna next take a look at kind of a small thing that's actually pretty useful. It's the way it saves different video files. Now, uh, on the memory card, it like any dash cam, it's just gonna record continuously, and then after the card fills up, it's gonna begin overriding the oldest footage. Now, what I like about the U1000 is uh, different types of video files are actually gonna be saved in different folders. So you'll have a folder, for example, for all of your just regular continuous recording while you're driving in case you then maybe push the button on the back of the dash cam to save the specific clip, uh, those emergency recording video files are gonna go to a separate folder. Then all of your parking mode recording, that's gonna go into a separate folder too. And what's nice is uh, after you've been driving for a while, uh, you're gonna start having hundreds if not thousands of video files and this extra kind of organization makes it a lot easier to go and find uh, the important video files quickly that you need. It's kind of a small thing, but it's actually really nice once you start needing to find your video files. Now, another feature that the U1000 
offers is the ADAS functionality. This is something I'm not really into as much. Uh, it's basically adding some additional safety capabilities. Uh, the U1000 does have an updatable database for alerting you to things like uh, fixed red light cameras and speed cameras, which I think is pretty cool. I already have that with my different radar detectors and if I'm running Waze or Google Maps or something, but it's nice to see it available here uh, in the U1000 as well. Though you lose that capability once you start shutting off the audio because of the other chatty startup stuff that I'd mentioned before. Now, really what the ADAS stuff is built in for uh, is to kind of make it safer while you drive. For example, the U1000 is gonna add things like lane departure warnings, or maybe a Ford collision detection and uh, it starts beeping in case it thinks you're about to uh, crash into the person ahead of you. Though in practice, the lane departure warning likes to go off whenever I'm, well, changing lanes. And the Ford collision warning system is noticing when oncoming traffic is coming and then I want to turn after the traffic is passed. Uh, and it also has front vehicle departure warning. So maybe if you're at a red light and the car ahead of you starts pulling away, but you're distracted and staring at your phone or something, uh, the dash cam can actually beep and notify you so you pay attention and start driving. That said, I find this stuff to be really annoying and I get a lot of false and unnecessary alerts. And so again, I just wind up disabling all this stuff altogether. I definitely appreciate the intention. I think it's really cool that they're adding this, but I haven't found it to be uh, all that useful in practice. And from what I've read online, I know a lot of other people disable it too, but it is something here that's available in the U1000. Next, moving on to the app that's available for your phone, uh, the dash cam has Wi-Fi built in and then you just connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot in the dash cam using your phone uh, and then you're able to go in here and uh, configure the dash cam. Once you're connected to the dash cam, you're going to be able to do things like uh, aim the dash cam's lens to make sure everything is uh, nice and straight. And I also like the fact that the U1000 adds some guidelines in the app uh, just to help you aim the dash cam properly. And that's especially nice considering the U1000 doesn't have an LCD screen in the back of the dash cam, and so you gotta do everything here with your phone. Additionally, the app is gonna allow you to connect to the dash cam and play back any of your previously recorded footage. Uh, and then finally, if you've got the dash cam connected to the cloud, you're gonna be able to connect to the dash cam remotely over the internet. Now, let's talk about the cloud next, because this is a pretty big deal here for the U1000. Thinkware is one of the few manufacturers that adds the cloud functionality. It's gonna allow you to do things like uh, locating your vehicle on a map in real time, uh, which works both when you're driving or while you're parked. Uh, you can set a geofence and then get a notification in case your vehicle leaves that area. And then some of my personal favorite features, there's things like you can get uh, real-time impact notifications both while you're driving as well as while you're parked. Uh, in case something happens, you can get notified or maybe somebody else can get notified that, hey, it looks like maybe there was an accident. Uh, additionally, you can then later on go and uh, live stream directly to the dash cam and get a real-time feed of exactly what's going on with your vehicle to kind of turn it into a remotely accessible security camera, which is pretty cool. Now, I'm personally much more familiar with Blackfuse cloud functionality. I've used it for many years personally and I've tested a bunch of different options. But generally what I've seen, kind of to give you like a overall picture here, uh, Thinkware has some cloud functionality as well. It's not as good as Blackview's options. I find Blackview, it's gonna be easier to set up uh, it's easier to get connected to and up and running. There's more features that are available. Uh, the features that they share, again, they're gonna work better with the Blackview options, but uh, I wanna focus primarily here on the U1000 because that's really what this video is about. And so starting off with the setup, again, you're gonna just uh, activate the Wi-Fi hotspot in the dash cam, and then you're gonna connect to the dash cam over the phone and go through the, uh, uh, the setup process. I find it's pretty problematic and challenging. I actually had to reach out to tech support to figure out how to do it. The general idea is uh, you connect to the dash cam with your phone, and then you turn your phone into a Wi-Fi hotspot, which your dash cam is gonna connect to to get all the setup stuff going. And then if you have a, a dedicated Wi-Fi hotspot in your car, which I think is the preferred method, that's what I've done, um, you can actually then have the uh, U1000 connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot in your car. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about connecting with your phone. And it's just kind of more independent and automatic, which I really like. That said, if you don't have a Wi-Fi hotspot in your car, you can still use uh, uh, the Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone and tether your dash cam to your phone for an internet connection. So that's gonna be a simpler option to use the hotspot on your phone, but if you have a dedicated Wi-Fi hotspot in your car, that's gonna be the best solution. I know most hotspots only work when you're driving. You have to go through some extra hoops and stuff to set something up to work while you're parked. I have an entire video dedicated to that if you wanna check it out. Again, just click the button on screen or link down in the video description. And then of course, if you're parked near your home or work or something, your dash cam can actually connect to that Wi-Fi hotspot and get an internet connection that way too. Uh, that's not gonna work, of course, if you're maybe out traveling, you're going out to eat or something, but at least if you're parked near your home or something, you can still get the cloud functionality. Now, either way, however you set this up, let's go ahead and take a look at how the cloud functionality works and what it's like. 
Now, diving right into it, once you start using it, in my experience, I found a lot of times it just doesn't work properly. You wind up getting weird connectivity issues to where it doesn't connect. So it's kind of quirky, but eventually it does seem to start working. So for example, if uh, your vehicle's parked, and again, you've got a Wi-Fi hotspot that's active and running while you're parked, uh, in case somebody hits your vehicle while you're parked, you're gonna be getting a notification directly to your phone, letting you know that an impact is detected. There's not gonna be any sort of image preview. The way I see with the Blackview options, it's just gonna be a simple notification to your phone. Uh, then that clip is going to take about two minutes or so to upload to the cloud. Uh, and while that clip is uploading, you're not going to be able to uh, view that clip, of course, because it's uploading. And you're also not going to be able to live stream to see what's going on right now with your dash cam because it's in the process of uploading. That said, I've also seen some instances where I try to connect to the live stream immediately after getting the notification and the dash cam does try to connect, uh, but it fails and it's not able to live stream. I have also seen other instances where it does connect and start to live stream, but then it Again, it dies and errors out and I'm not able to see what's going on. So either way, with a bunch of testing, I'm not able to reliably see exactly what's going on with my car immediately when I get the notification. Again, with the Blackview, you can still live stream uh, while it's uploading, but with the Thinkware, you're going to be kind of out of luck for about two minutes or so while you're waiting uh, for everything to kind of upload. Then once the upload finishes, you'll get a second notification to your phone, uh, which is going to allow you to then view the uh, clip that actually triggered the dash cam and triggered the event, uh, and you're going to be able to see the recording of whatever it was that your uh, U1000 just detected. Additionally, if you then want to go ahead and live stream into the dash cam to see what's going on, you can do that. Uh, again, this process is kind of slow. It takes about 10 seconds or so to connect to the dash cam. Uh, additionally, once you are actively live streaming, you can view either the front or the rear dash cam and you can switch between them. Though there's about a 10 second lag or so between uh, real time and what you're gonna be seeing on your phone. Now with the black view, it's gonna be much closer to real time, only about one second behind real time. Uh, plus it's actually much faster to get connected in the first place. Uh, but with the U1000, after you get connected, yes, it's gonna be about 10 seconds behind real time. So it works, but it's not quite as live as some of the other options. But yes, you do still get the live streaming. Now, personally, I wish it was faster and more responsive, so in case something happens to my car and I get worried, I can check much more quickly, but just kind of be aware that things are going to be slower uh, and not quite as quick here with the U1000, but it does still work. Now, that said, there's also some features that I find are missing here from the U1000 that I use with the black views that I wish the U1000 had too. For example, with the U1000, you're not going to be able to uh, remotely connect to the dash cam and go in and maybe change any settings. You're going to have to go into the car and connect with your phone uh, and actually change it kind of more directly that way. Something else I've noticed is uh, in case you want to manually trigger the dash cam, you want to save something important that happened on the road, uh, the black views will automatically upload that clip to the cloud, though the Thinkware doesn't do that. It just stays in the dash cam itself. Speaking of uh, automatic uploads, uh, in case an impact is detected while you're driving, uh, Thinkware can automatically upload that to the cloud, which is important say in case of an accident or something. Uh, of course, it saves it on the dash cam. It's just going to upload it to the cloud too. Blackview does that as well. Um, though I find with the Thinkware, I wind up just disabling all the impact detection stuff because of the fact that it falses a lot on things like speed bumps and potholes. And so I don't wind up using that. And then in parking mode, that feature does work as well, though not in every mode. Like for example, it's going to work in your motion detection and buffered impact detection. Uh, but if you switch over to the energy saving mode, which is really cool, kind of one of the really nice features here with the U1000, because it's an energy saving mode, it's gonna save power and shut off the cloud functionality so you don't get the uh, impact notifications if you wanna run it in energy saving mode. So just kind of something to be aware of. And then finally, if you're just sitting around at home and you're like, oh, I wanna go ahead and grab a clip that's maybe not saved in the cloud. Uh, with the Thinkware, you're gonna to have to go over to the dash cam, pull the memory card out and pop it into your uh, computer or something or go into the car and actually connect to it directly with your phone. With Blackview over the cloud, you can remotely connect to your dash cam uh, and just view all the video files that are saved in the dash cam, which is really nice if you're uh, at home in your office or laying in bed, which I've done before. Uh, again, just Blackview has much more capability in terms of their cloud functionality. So yes, Thinkware, it does work. It just doesn't work as well. It doesn't have nearly as many features and the features that it does share, um, they just don't work as well. So I personally don't really like it as much as the Blackview when it comes to the cloud stuff. Cloud is really where the Blackview shines, but as an overall package, again, think where it's going to give you better video quality, better reliability, and a lot of the core stuff that most people would still want when it comes to the cloud functionality. So overall, as a complete package, I actually think the U1000 is going to be better uh, than the Blackview options. Plus, it adds a lot of stuff that you don't see from some of the uh, lower to mid-tier dash cams, especially when it comes to the cloud features or kind of this more advanced uh, parking mode functionality. And that's really, I think, what's making the U1000 special. It's having so many features that are available, plus it's going to be adding good video quality and good reliability. And it's for that reason that I personally think it's one of the very best dash cams available on the market. And I mean, looking online, it seems to be continually uh, recommended as 
one of the best and I completely understand why. And so if you're looking for a high-end dash cam, good video quality, good reliability, uh, good parking mode capabilities, if you'd like, especially uh, long-term parking mode recording, energy saving, plus uh, your buffered impact detection, especially up front, the U1000 is going to be a great choice. Is it perfect? No, nothing is. Everything has pros and cons, and sure, it's also going to be one of the most expensive dash cams that are out there, but that's why. It's a high-end dash cam, feature-packed dash cam. It's got a lot of bells and whistles, and it seems to be a pretty good all-around option. And so uh, if you'd like one, again, I'll have links down in the video description to uh, the U1000 single-channel only or two-channel or different recommended memory cards or accessories and battery packs and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to have a bunch more information for you down in the video description. So awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, again, ask down below. And other than that, stay safe out there. Happy driving. And I'll see you in the next video.